Hey, good morning, Tribe family. It's so good to be able to connect with you this morning. Uh, it's becoming rather chilly in the morning, so winter is uh, definitely here. But it's so great to be with you this morning to be able to connect in this way. Um, we've got some exciting announcements and some good news, and hopefully a great message that we want to share with you this morning. So we trust that you're gonna that you're gonna enjoy this. First up, uh, I just want to say that we miss you terribly. Uh, Santi also sends a love and. Uh, we wish that we could really be with you guys and then we trust that that will happen soon. Um, we also want to announce um, a national day of prayer and fasting. Um, the president actually asked uh, religious leaders in a meeting recently to call for a national day of uh, uh, prayer and fasting. And so a, a date was decided on, which is the 29th of May. And uh, as the church community in Paris, we also came together and uh, you know, this is something that we want to be united around. So we'll be sending um, some information around that to you guys as well. But it's a great, great opportunity for us as churches in Paris to get together, uh, not physically, uh, but in the spirit to pray and to fast on the 29th of May um, and to pray for our president, for our nation, uh, to continue to pray against this, this terrible virus, um, to pray for those people that have lost loved ones, uh, for people that are sick, to pray for healing. So a great opportunity for us in Paris as the churches to pray of our city of glory. So 29th of May, day of prayer and fasting. It's going to be fantastic. Good. So I want to read from Colossians 1 this morning to you guys and, um, and uh, get straight into, into the word this morning. So Colossians 1, phenomenal piece uh, of scripture in the Bible. Um, I'm going to read from verse 13. And it says... Um, he has delivered us from the domain of darkness. That's Jesus. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him, and for him and he is before all things and in him all things hold together what a phenomenal scripture in the bible around the preeminence of christ jesus our king uh, wonderful wonderful scripture just to remind yourself you know what it is that we have been called to so clearly when we read colossians 1 there is the dominion or domain of darkness at work and then there is the kingdom of god so there's two clear um, forces um, at play here. No competition between the kingdom of God and, um, and, and, and the domain of darkness. Jesus has achieved the victory. We completely believe that. But the enemy still has power. And he's got his domain and his area where he's um, trying to rule and reign. And, um, but there's the kingdom of God to, to which we give ourselves and to which we have been transferred into. It's not about black people versus white people. It's not about rich people versus poor people. I don't want people to even get their minds into that space where it becomes a thing about color. It becomes a thing about status in society. It's not about that at all. Uh, it really is about the kingdom of God and the domain of darkness. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Don't let the enemy um, attempt to, to get you to fix, fixate it on what he is doing. Focus on what God is doing and his kingdom. So <laughs> I wanted to just get that out of the way and make that very clear to you guys, because I want to I want to get to some very, very important points here. Um, and, and I want us to realize what we've been called to essentially. So um, I've got a question this morning. My question is, is the church an essential service? So I mean, there's so many there's so many things going around at the moment that, you know, what is an essential service? What is not an essential service? I mean, government has given a definition to an essential service in the regulations and, you know, it's all over the place. So is church an essential service? I want to say to you, of course, church is an essential service. It's always been an essential service. It's never been in doubt whether the church is an essential service or not. The church has always been an essential service. But... We don't get our essentiality from whether a politician says that we are essential or not. We get our essentiality based on the fact that Jesus Christ said he will build his church 
and the gates of hell will not prevail against that. You see, the church that you and I built will fail. No doubt. The church that you and I built will fail. I don't... <laughs> I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting carried away here, but I'm very passionate about this. I don't want to go back to a building on a Sunday morning. I don't want to do that. Going back to a building, sure, gathering on a Sunday is really important. It's scriptural, but that's not the essence of church. The essence of church is about you and me bringing heaven to Bring heaven to earth. About calling the heavenly realms onto this planet that you and I have been called to live on and bring uh, glory to God and see his kingdom ushered into. That is what it's about being the church. You know, so is the church essential? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's always been essential. But if you think of the church as a building on a Sunday, you are going to be frustrated. You are going to be very frustrated, frustrated during this time. If you think of church as a place that you go to on a Sunday, you may even reason, you may even reason that it's not necessary for me to tithe anymore because I'm not getting, I'm not getting the message on a Sunday anymore. We don't gather anymore. If you, if you think wrongly about church, you may think, I don't need to tithe anymore. Just like people are thinking about school fees during this time. You know, my, my kids are essentially homeschooled, you know, and, and the teachers are giving uh, lessons through, through Google Classrooms and whatnot. And so I don't need to pay school fees because God, I'm not getting the value, you know, that I'm supposed to get, which is absolute, absolute nonsense. I mean, I just want to say teachers are working harder than ever before during this time to ed educate our children. I want to make a statement this morning. I want to say to you that Jesus Christ, the preeminence of Christ, that that's, the Bible speaks of you in Colossians 1. He did not die for a building. He died for his church that he's building, that he's built, that he's building, that he's going to be building forever. That's what he died for, for you and me to be that church, not to go to a place of worship on a Sunday. And, and, and sometimes and very often tick a box. You know, because my experience certainly is that I've, I've seen, you know, people that, that, you know, when we go to a place on a Sunday morning, it becomes very exclusive often. You know, it becomes, how do you look? What do you smell like? What's the color of your skin? And, and all those factors determine whether you're allowed into that building on a Sunday morning. I don't want to go back to a building that's devoid of the presence of God and devoid of the Holy Spirit which is inside of people. You see, Jesus says, I'm building my church. And then he leaves this planet. And he says, I'm sending you a helper. And he sends us the Holy Spirit. And we will we'll dig deeper into the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, which is next Sunday. But he sends us this helper. So, so I want to say to you this morning, church, the way I understand it, certainly in the way the Bible understands it, and the way Jesus meant it to be, was never meant to be devoid of the Holy Spirit. This is the greatest time of revival that we are entering with the Holy Spirit empowering every single believer to be the church. Church is not about a building. So, so what about us manifesting church today in our homes, in our marriages, in our businesses, why not? Why not care for your neighbor? You see, you see, I, I, there's a lot of people that give to the poor, and I and I want to honor those people that give to the poor. It's absolutely biblical, and we should do that. And as a church, we do that. We care for people that does not have food, that does not have electricity. We provide and we care for them. But you know what? I'm I'm more concerned about this morning. This morning, I'm more concerned about how are you treating your your own family during this time. I'm more concerned about how you're treating your wife during this time. I'm more concerned about how you're treating your kids during this time. I'm more concerned about how you're treating your, your employees during this time. That's what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about people building some character and being the church and manifesting the church in their own lives as opposed to going out there 
to be seen by the rest of the world. Why not go and stop in the parking lot to pray for our schools? You know, schools are going to open on the 1st of June. Grade 7 and grade 12 are going to go back to school. Why not take your vehicle? Or if you're close by to the school, why not go and stop in the parking lot of our schools and pray for our schools, pray for our teachers, pray for protection over those schools? Why not take your car and go and stop at the police station or even go inside and say, can I pray for you? Even if you find two policemen and women, say, can I pray for you for protection, for wisdom? Why not take your car and go to the hospital and sit in the parking lot and pray for nurses that are tired? Pray for protection and healing for every single person that's in that hospital. Why not do that? But you see, we like to be seen by the rest of the world. We like to be glorified as opposed to bringing the glory to Jesus Christ. And that's what the church is about. The church that you and I are building, when we're building for ourselves, when it comes from a place of glorifying our own efforts, will fail. But the church that Jesus Christ is building will never fail and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. If we cannot be church outside of a building on a Sunday, then we are not the church. You see, the church became unstoppable when the Holy Spirit came on them. That's when they became unstoppable. A bunch of men and women who were so scared and timid that they couldn't move but suddenly, in a moment, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and power came on them. And they changed the world. That's when the church became unstoppable. We've always been essential. That's never been in question. But if we're going to seek identity and whether a politician says that we are, we are, we are we're essential or not, then we are failing as the church of God. We've always been essential. And we will never stop being essential. I used to, when I was a small boy, I used to, there was these, I don't know what you call them, forms that you could complete in the Eisgenoot or in magazines. Um, and then you would get something back. It's something useless, completely useless, like a magazine or whatever. It's not worth anything. But I was so intrigued by that idea of just receiving something in the post. I was so intrigued by the idea of going to the post office with my father and waiting to see if there's a parcel with my name on it. I loved that. I, I, <laughs> I really, really enjoyed it. There was something about it. I don't know why. To be that, that moment of expectation. Is that thing that I ordered, that I, that I, the form that I completed, is that coming today in the post? And uh, yeah, Heinrich, I think, inherited some of that from me because he loves take a lot. Like he spends a lot of time on take a lot. He likes to order things. Um, and you can see the expectation that's within him during that time while he waits for that order. I mean, with Take A Lot, you can see, you can track the order. You know, you can see where it is and they've got these little arrows and it shows you it's left the, 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 the warehouse and it's now uh, in the vehicle for delivery and all those things. And there's this expectation that builds inside of you until that parcel arrives. And it's just unbelievable when you open it and it's this amazing uh, gift and He's so joy, overjoyed with that. And this week, you know, Heinrich ordered himself a trampoline, saved her for some money. And the order came sooner than expected. But he was obviously so elated. And uh, I, I just, for me, this moment is, is like, it's like us, that we've, we've, we've prayed into the heavenlies. We've, we've declared over our nation that the kingdom of God will come, that we will be a nation of great revival. And I just see that there's going to come an outpouring of the Holy Spirit over our nation, over this globe, like never, ever before. It's like we've placed the order. And now we're waiting with great expectation for that day to come. And I can't wait for it to happen. But if we're going to think wrongly about the church, if we're going to think wrongly about the church, if it's about going to a building on a Sunday, and that will never, ever happen. You and I need to be the church today. Go and check on your neighbor. Send someone a WhatsApp or an SMS and ask, are you okay? Share the gospel with them when they say they're not. Speak hope and speak life into the situation. Don't focus on being or going back to a building on a Sunday. If you want to look good to the world, man, that's easy. With technology today, you can edit some videos, you can do some tricks and 
There you go. Popularity. But we've not been called to performance. We've been called to bring heaven to earth. Today, during lockdown, you can be the church. We are the church. You can worship in your homes. You can take communion. You can go out, go and pray for people. Go and pray for people, not to be seen by other people. Not for a claim, not for status, not for Facebook likes, but to bring glory to God and to see His kingdom come. We can do that. We can do that. There's nothing, absolutely nothing stopping us from doing that. We are the church of God against whom the gates of hell will not prevail. Go and pray for the policemen and women. Go and pray for our schools. Go and stop it. Go and drive down Bria Street. Stretch your hand out of the window. Not both hands at the same time, but <laughs> just one hand out of the window and pray over those businesses whose doors are closed at the moment. Pray, pray and declare provision over them. I do that. I look at myself and we do that. When, we, when I drive in town, that's what I do. I, I say, Father, thank you. Thank you that you're blessing this restaurant with provision. Although we don't see it right now, Father, you're going to bring them through this time. Be the church. Declare because you've been given authority. You're not the church to go to a building on a Sunday. You're the church because you've been given authority to bring heaven to earth and to live from that realm. So this week, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you this week. <sighs> Take the time. Stop in the parking lot at the school. Pray for the primary school. Pray for the high school. Just stop there. Just stop at the police station. Pray for those policemen and women. Stop at the hospital. Just say to them, I just want to come sit in the parking lot. I just want to pray. And let's see heaven come on the city of glory like never before. Drive down Bria Street. Pray for those businesses. Declare the kingdom of God over this city of glory in the name of Jesus. So, Father, as you sent Jesus, I'm praying that you will send us to be the church of God. I pray that over you. I declare that over you in the name of Jesus. We love you. God bless you. And we'll chat to you again soon.